I'm Wei Lian Deng, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Stackbox. In this video, I'm going to share three key ways that Kubernetes supports auto-scaling. Among, among its many benefits, Kubernetes makes it easy to dynamically manage your infrastructure and applications using native auto-scaling capabilities. It does this with three different approaches. The first is called horizontal pod scaling, or HPA. Most Kubernetes applications will experience varying usage demand over time, and it may make sense to adjust the number of pod replicas uh, to better meet that demand. And so HPA is designed to automate the scaling of uh, pod replicas uh, to meet that use case. And so how it works is that HPA monitors running pods and will determine whether the number of replicas should be adjusted to better meet pre-configured target values. And so those values can vary. Um, for instance, a deployment may have a target CPU utilization that you want to uh, meet, and so it will then uh, you know, adjust the number of replicas to better meet uh, that utilization, and so here it might scale up the number of pod replicas. Um, in addition, um, you can rely on custom metrics instead, and custom metrics might encompass things such as network traffic, um, as well as memory usage. And you can also utilize external metrics if you prefer um, with the HPA auto scaling. And external metrics are things that have nothing to do in terms of values tied to a pod's application. So this might, for instance, be the number of pending tasks in a queue or so on. Um, and so there are di these different metrics that you can utilize as sources you know, to, to determine whether these replicas are added or removed. And um, in the case of the, CP the CPU utilization, then the metric source could be rely on the metric server and you have to ensure that you have uh, CPU resource request limits specified in your pod specifications. Uh, in the case of the custom and external metrics, then you're gonna need to utilize those relevant APIs. Now, the way that the uh, you know, HPA works is it, it's, it's part of the standard uh, Kube controller manager daemon. Um, and so, uh, you know, you, again, uh, you know, primary way that you can focus on scaling uh, pod replicas. Now, the second way that Kubernetes supports auto-scaling is focused around what's called cluster auto-scaling. And in this case, rather than uh, monitoring and adjusting the number of pod replicas, it's going to focus on um, monitoring and looking at nodes and managing the size of your Kubernetes cluster uh, to better meet, for instance, demand or maybe better utilization, uh, you know, which has, for instance, uh, cost implications, particularly um, in cloud environments. And so there's two main tasks that the cl cluster autoscaling uh, method uh, utilizes is, first, it's going to be looking for uh, or watching for unschedulable pods. And these are um, pods that you know, cannot be scheduled due to insufficient you know, CPU or memory resources or uh, particular node affinity rules or you know, perhaps their taint and tolerations don't match um, an existing node. And so what happens is um, it will look to see if, uh, by looking at the node pool, it will determine whether adding a node will help uh, to remove, um, uh, unblock that pod. And so if it does, and the node pool can be increased in size, then it'll go ahead and add a node. Now, sort of like the corollary to that is that it will also look at whether the number of uh, currently deployed pods can be allocated on a smaller number of nodes. Um, and if it can, it will evict pods from a particular node and then remove that node. And in terms of allocation, it will, you know, in determining whether a pod can be moved, it will take into account um, considerations such as pod priority, um, as well as uh, pod uh, disruption budgets. Um, now, it's worth keeping in mind that the way cluster auto scaling works is that it can only uh, be used with supported Kubernetes platforms. And because this method is adding and deleting infrastructure, you do want to ensure that you know, any credentials that are utilized for that are uh, also adequately secured. Now, the third way that Kubernetes supports auto scaling has to do with what's called vertical pod auto scaling. And here, rather than you know, monitoring pods or nodes, um, what's actually we look, um, what's being monitored is um, resource limits 
And the reason why that's useful is that this auto scaling method is designed to better match resource allotment to actual usage. Um, and to understand why that is, you have to understand that uh, sort of the default Kubernetes scheduler will actually overcommit CPU and memory reservations on nodes because the assumption is that pods are going to stick to their closer to their initial resource requests limits rather than their upper limits. And so they're um, and, and so the, the resource limits can be adjusted using the VPA method and can be done using live data rather than relying on you know, guesswork or benchmarks that only um, occasionally run. And there are three components that make up the VPA. Um, there's the recommender. And so this is the component that is monitoring and determining um, sort of ideal, uh, I, you know, ideal resource limit uh, limits and in, in, in overall utilization. Um, and then there's the updater. And the updater is responsible for evicting pods uh, when resource limits need to be changed. And there's a third component around admission controller. And this component uses a mutating admission webhook to um, overwrite you know, resource limit um, requests uh, at pod creation time. Now, it's also worth noting that uh, you know, running pods cannot have their limits updated, and so existing pods can't have um, the, the resource limits updated. You have to remove the pod and create a new pod with a new resource limit. Um, and you can also, it's also worth noting that the VPA method can be uh, utilized in recommendation mode only. So there you go. Uh, three ways that Kubernetes makes it easy uh, to dynamically manage your cluster environments. To learn more, visit www.stackrocks.com.